Okay, here we are, back out in the lab, and I'm going to go through a basic alignment procedure for you uh, of the version 2 current limiting pulse width modulator. You'll see that I've got access to my three trimmer potentiometers. They are percent duty cycle, my current limiting, which is also a percent duty cycle, and the frequency adjustment, which is 1 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz. I have my clamp-on digital amp meter already set up here uh, so that we can watch the current. Now I've got about 14 volts going in, which is your charging system voltage, and I have my cell negative connected to the cell negative terminal of the pulse width modulator. I have the ground terminal connected to the negative of my power supply, which uh, is the return path and then my positive voltage goes directly to the cell so the the complete circuit goes from the positive of the power supply to the positive input of the cell out of the cell from the negative terminal of the cell to the negative terminal to the cell negative terminal on the pulse width modulator and then the ground back to the power supply there's your complete circuit I turn the pulse width modulator circuit on by simply taking the 12 volts that's at the top of the cell and turning it on uh, and applying it to the pulse width modulator. This could also be through a control relay. Alright, so if I turn it on, you'll see on the scope that I've got a pulse waveform. Now, this pulse waveform, my zero point was here, and I'm at uh, 5 volts per division. So, you'll see that the settling voltage in between pulses is about 12 volts. And that's what you would expect for uh, a 5 neutral des plate design in potassium hydroxide. In between the settling voltage area is the current pulse going into the cell. So if I increase the duty cycle, I will also increase the current. Now I've already zeroed out my meter. And you can see at this duty cycle I'm drawing 4.95 amps so let me just increase the power a little bit with my duty cycle adjustment my, my oscillator frequency right now is about 5 kilohertz on the pulse width modulator okay so 5.01 amperes now if I take my current limiting adjustment and I rotate it counterclockwise If I can get the alignment tool in there, there we go. Now watch the watch the waveform on the scope. You'll see that as soon as I hit the threshold, the duty cycle is going to shorten. Oh, right there. Okay, so I'm just going to rotate it clockwise to bring it right back up to 5 amps. And that is my threshold. Now, at this stage, no matter how hot the cell gets, let me just uh, increase the speed here. And I'm going to go to AC input. Raise the position a little bit. And then go 2 volts per division. Alright, so now you can see better the waveform. This settling voltage here is about 12 volts. This current peak is about 14 volts. So in between pulses, this is where the cell voltage settles to. If I were to disconnect power, it would settle down to about 2 volts for quite a while. So at this, at this duty cycle, it's drawing about 5 amps, and that's where I've set my current limiter. So no matter what happens now as the cell warms up, it will try to draw more current, and what will happen is the peak current will go up, but the but the duration of that peak current will shorten and the RMS current should remain fairly constant. So what will happen over time is this peak will become shorter as if I were to do this. Okay, That's what it will look like over time as the cell heats up. Now at that at that duration I'm drawing 2.6 amps. 
So I'm going to bring it back up to 5 amps, and it's going to flatten out right there because I can't go any higher than 5 amps. And that's it. That's, that's my maximum current. So it is working as advertised. That is a good thing. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to let this now run. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let this run for a couple of hours. I'm going to let the, the cell warm up. Uh, and when I come back, hopefully I'm going to show you that the current has remained the same, but the du duration of the peak output has shortened to compensate for the higher peak current going into the cell. Incidentally, the case is running perfectly cool, cannot, cannot detect any temperature increase whatsoever. And of course you see a lot of foam in here because uh, I tried cleaning out the cell with some dishwasher detergent and evidently I didn't rinse it out completely so I'm just going to let it run like this and I'm going to let it flush itself out and then I'm going to rinse it out with distilled water a couple of times and then um, replenish the electrolyte in the cell. There you have it. This is good. I'm, I'm enjoying this. I'm going to go out and mow the lawn. Uh, when I come back I'm going to uh, show you the difference in the in the waveform and then increase the concentration of the electrolyte, hook it up to the John Deere motor and start playing around with that again. While I'm at it, a uh, number of people have written me and said that they were very, very concerned about my my video where I talked about hexavalent chromium. Okay. It is dangerous stuff, but it can be handled safely. You don't have to worry about inhaling it if you're not spraying it into the air. And uh, you don't really have to worry about it being absorbed through your skin if you handle the liquid with latex gloves. The safe disposal of hexavalent chromium laden solution would be to collect it in, say, um, empty one gallon plastic milk jugs and label it chromium 6 with whatever electrolyte you're using, label that also on the outside and bring it to a hazardous materials collection point. Many towns and municipalities sponsor regular collections that are free to the public for hazardous materials and this is where I would recommend you bring uh, your waste electrolyte when you're done. Okay? So that's, that's it. You know, be cautious, don't be paranoid. And have fun with your HHO. That's all for now. Zero Fossil Fuel. Everybody take care.